convoy. Across the seven seas, under the protection of armed escort, men and weapons of the United Nations move out to far-flung battlefronts, carrying the fight to the strongholds of the enemy. And the ships get through, busy docks near the scene of action. And case after case of American fighting planes, hard-hitting P-47 Thunderbolts. The job now is to hurl these thunderbolts into action without delay. That requires the quick uncreating and assembly of the airplane under any conditions, anywhere. To make this possible, a simple, practical method of uncreating and assembly has been devised, by which the P-47, although it weighs nearly seven tons, can be ready for battle without the aid of spatial equipment, such as heavy jacks, cranes, or hoists. To assemble a P-47 under field conditions, the only equipment needed is a standard set of mechanics tools, manpower, and the shipping cases themselves. The first step in the whole procedure is for the crew chief to read the instructions that are fastened to the front end of either of the shipping cases. Important! Do not remove shipping cases from trucks until after you have read these instructions. The instructions are simple but important. Each step must be carefully followed. The instruction book should be read completely so that the crew chief may have an overall picture of the job to be done. Then he can go to work. First, the truck bearing the wing case is drawn up behind the fuselage case. This provides an elevated surface on which the men can stand while removing the fuselage case top. The fuselage case must remain on the truck. The top of the fuselage case is removed in one piece. Take out the lag screws. And pry up one end with a crowbar. This end is held up with a short piece of timber wedged into place. Two or three lag screws, which are inserted in each corner of the top, serve as towing posts, around which is looped a length of one inch rope. Now, with manpower, the top is dragged off the case onto the ground. After the lag screws have been removed from one of the sides, this panel can simply fall to the ground and the other side is removed in the same way. Then, the ends of the case are taken off. We're going to need those stringers all through the job. They are pried loose from the sides of the case. They are sawed through the middle and the two halves are nailed firmly together. Now we are ready to unload the wing case and remove its contents. For this job, you need a pair of skids and the one-inch rope. Hey, go easy. That case weighs over three tons. When its top has been pulled off, the sides and ends of the wing case are removed by the same methods used on the fuselage case. After the hinge fittings in the wing case have been loosened, approximately 50 men, using the fuselage side stringer sections for lifting, carry the wings out of the case and place them on the ground. This wing is being turned over so that the landing gear is on the underside 
for convenience later on in assembly. After both wings have been taken out, the other parts in the wing case are removed. The parts from the wing case are laid out in orderly fashion, and the crew chief is now ready to direct the construction of the platform on which the plane will be assembled. This platform is built entirely out of the material that makes up the two shipping cases. The first essential is a plot of firm, flat, and level ground. On this is placed one of the sides from the fuselage case with the flat side up. Eight feet from the front of the platform and on each side a slot is cut for wheel clearance needed later in assembly. This slot is 30 inches long and 6 inches deep. Now the second side is brought up and laid over the first. A similar slot is cut in this second side. The finished platform looks like this. And here it is in diagram. Let's see how it's built. Here are the two fuselage case sides nailed together to form the base of the platform. Now comes the end of the fuselage case and the top of the wing case. Then comes a side from the wing case. And on the same level, a fuselage end. The remaining wing case side and the two ends from the wing case are laid on top and nailed in place. This leaves a space toward the back of the platform, which is built up by nailing together three two-by-fours taken from the wing case stringers and laying them lengthwise like this. The top of the fuselage case becomes the top layer of the platform. A diagram similar to this is reproduced in the instruction manual and should be followed in detail when the platform is being constructed. At this point, the crew chief is ready to direct the transfer of the fuselage onto the platform. If the level of the trailer bearing the fuselage is higher than the platform you have built, wheel pits of sufficient depth should be dug to bring trailer and platform to very nearly the same level. The truck bearing the fuselage is slowly and carefully backed up. Keeping it always in exact line with the platform. The prime mover is disconnected. A tow line is fastened around the entire bottom of the fuselage case. 